Welcome to the first video in our series to introduce the Plasma Pi project. I'm Nick Murphy, and I'll be presenting an overview of the project on behalf of the broader Plasma Pi community. First off, what is Plasma Pi? The Plasma Pi project is an effort to grow an open source software ecosystem for plasma research and education. A software ecosystem is a collection of software packages that are developed and co evolve in the same environment. A software ecosystem includes code, documentation, and tests. It includes educational elements, and it includes community. Let's step back a moment and talk about our motivation for the project. Software is crucial for every area of modern plasma research. For example, we use software to process and analyze experimental data, to simulate plasma phenomena, to interpret in-situ observations of space plasma, to develop theoretical models to explain plasma behavior, and to test our theoretical predictions against how plasma actually behaves in nature in the laboratory. Despite how vital software is to every aspect of our research, those of us in science tend not to use best practices from software engineering when writing code. This often leads to duplicated efforts, wasted time, and poor communication of ideas and information. For example, do any of these scenarios sound familiar to you for your own research? Have you ever tried using someone else's code or your own code from six months ago and decided it would be easier to just rewrite it from scratch? Have you ever inherited legacy code from a member of your group and need to spend days figuring out what it's actually doing? Have you ever had to use code with absolutely no documentation? Have you ever encountered code with variable names like DTP TTF? If so, you know what it's like to encounter a software pain point. It's pretty common to encounter pain points like these when using scientific software. There's often a distinct lack of user friendliness. Research software tends to be difficult to compile and install, especially if the software is platform dependent or if you have to compile libraries and mess around with compiler flags. These issues are made worse when the documentation is obsolete or even missing entirely. It's often difficult to read and modify code that's been handed to you by someone else. Error messages are often cryptic, which makes it difficult to debug. Codes are often written in proprietary languages that require the purchase of expensive licenses. The packages that do exist are not written to be compatible with each other, which makes it difficult when your research requires you to combine the results from multiple codes. We often use code that has not been thoroughly validated, tested, or benchmarked, which makes it harder to trust in the results that the code provides. These pain points have consequences. It's harder to begin plasma physics research when you have to write your own routines to read and then analyze data sets or use code without documentation that someone else wrote. It becomes harder to collaborate when the software used by a different group is not compatible with your own software. Without a shared framework, we frequently rewrite code that others have already written. This leads to frequent duplication, triplication, and quadruplication of functionality. When the code used for a paper is not openly available, our research becomes less scientifically reproducible. And at least in my own experience, the combination of these pain points sometimes makes scientific research pretty frustrating. But there is no reason why these pain points have to exist. We can begin addressing these pain points by making our software open source and available for others to use, modify, and redistribute. We can emphasize writing clean code, code that is readable, usable, and maintainable. Using a high-level language like Python helps facilitate readability. We can prioritize writing and updating documentation so that new users have a place to go to get started. We can create a suite of automated tests that gets run every time we change the code. Different software projects can coordinate with each other to develop code as a community. And by doing so, we can build a shared software framework. Our solution is to create a software ecosystem. We began PlasmaPy to address each of these pain points by fostering a Python ecosystem for plasma science while taking care to use best practices from research software engineering. We are developing the PlasmaPy core package to contain the most frequently needed functionality across disciplines. This will include common frameworks for data analysis. The PlasmaPy package is the foundation of the software ecosystem. Affiliated or add-on packages will contain specialized functionality in order to be created especially by members of the broader Plasma community. This ecosystem will include educational resources such as Python notebooks to introduce Plasma physics concepts using tools from PlasmaPy. 
We are working to build community around this ecosystem, for example, by having weekly informal online community meetings and adopting a code of conduct. So why do we choose Python as the programming language for this software ecosystem? Python is a high-level, general-purpose programming language. The extensive scientific Python ecosystem contains hundreds of packages for things like machine learning, image processing, visualization, and data analysis. Choosing Python also lets us work with existing packages such as AstroPy and SunPy. Python is free and open source, so there's no need to spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars for an expensive software license. Python acts as a glue since it can connect software written in a variety of languages. Within Python, we can call routines written in established languages like Fortran, C, and C++, as well as newer languages like Julia. The scientific Python community is highly supportive, which means there are places to go to ask for help. The culture within the Python community encourages crafting clean, reusable, and especially readable code. Python is not only widely used in related fields like heliophysics and astronomy, but also throughout business and industry. Because of its widespread use, it is an ideal language for physics students to learn, especially as roughly half of physics graduate students enter industry within a few years of finishing their degree. And in fact, Python is one of the most popular languages currently used in college courses that introduce programming. And what are the main goals of the PlasmaPy project? First, we are developing all code openly. All code will be released under an open source license that allows you to freely use, modify, and redistribute the software. We are building communities surrounding the software project by actively welcoming new contributors and also expressing gratitude to members of the community. We strive to use best practices for scientific software engineering. We prioritize readability, usability, and long-term maintainability of our software by doing our best to create well-tested and well-documented code. By doing all of this, we are encouraging practices to ensure that our research becomes scientifically reproducible. PlasmaPy is still fairly early in its development. As we approach version 1.0 in the coming years, we expect a number of benefits. Benefits that we know are already occurring for mature packages like AstroPy. This effort will produce well-documented, well-tested, and peer-reviewed code. By working together as a community, we can produce reliable code with validated physics. Creating a software ecosystem for plasma science will improve interoperability between different packages, which in turn will increase the potential for collaborations between different groups and even across disciplines. By coordinating code development as a community, we will lessen duplication of functionality. This will lower code development costs, such as the software development overhead costs that come with building a new experiment. We expect PlasmaPy to enable us to build scientific reproducibility into our research workflows and make our research more efficient. Open development allows the package to be community-driven. PlasmaPy is by no means limited to what the current contributors want. You can request new features, and you can even extend the capabilities yourself. With that said, we want this resource to be accessible and useful to all community members, from the most enthusiastic developers among us to the more casual coder. An open source software ecosystem for plasma science will reduce barriers to entry to newcomers to the field and enable students to get a head start on their first research projects. It will improve transfer of knowledge, for example, by providing documentation that describes both the code and the underlying physics, using both examples and exercises. We'll be able to incorporate community tools for plasma education, such as computational notebooks that introduce plasma concepts with PlasmaPy. We'll be able to create exercises that can be integrated into the classroom. This effort will introduce students and the rest of our community to Python and collaborative co-development practices and provide skills beyond the classroom that will be useful whether they continue in research in academia or even enter industry. The PlasmaPy project is by and for the plasma science community. Its success depends on community participation. The first way to become involved is to join the conversation. Check the video description for links to our communication platforms. You're also welcome to attend our weekly online community meetings. You can become an early adopter by using pre-1.0 beta versions of PlasmaPy as they are released. Advisors can encourage students to become involved. It is incredibly helpful for members of the broader Plasma community to request new features, especially for functionality that could help you complete a research project. Anyone in the broader community is welcome to contribute code, tests, and documentation. Contributions can be, 
and even should be driven by your own research needs and not just dictated by the Plasma Pi roadmap. If you are part of a research group, we encourage you to team up with Plasma Pi as a participating project. Please feel free to reach out to us if you would like to include contributions to Plasma Pi or an affiliated package in a grant proposal. Because Plasma Pi is a community-driven effort, anyone in the Plasma community has the opportunity to shape its future development. This is the first video in a series to introduce Plasma Pi. In the next few videos, we will go over how to navigate our documentation, website, and repository, how to install Plasma Pi, and how to get started using it. We'll then talk about how to contribute to Plasma Pi, share puns about computational magnetohydrodynamics, and discuss how your group can join as a participating project. So please stay tuned, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates.